20 million people plus are in the danger zone. What is the danger zone? Essentially, 10 million people are on the verge of being evicted. And five or 10 million people are behind on their mortgage, but they're being protected by the CARES Act. So I estimate 20, 25 million people are in the danger zone of economic collapse. Being evicted, don't have a job, about to lose their car, buying on their credit cards. But here's what's funny. There is a worker shortage across the nation. People, restaurants are paying 15 bucks an hour to get folks to come in. And there's a service delivery company up in New York. I forget where the article was. This guy was bussing in people from Alabama because they could not find enough workers to run their trucks. They were bussing people in and putting them up in hotels so they can go ahead and run their business. Now, what, what does this mean? We're in a very strange, strange economy. There are jobs, there are opportunity, but people do not want to work. I blame a lot of this on social media. With social media, you see these people who are having lunch in the middle of the day, they're just hanging out, they're just doing what they need to do, they're doing what they want to do, excuse me, they're doing what they want to do, they don't seem to have any cares in the world, they have all this free time, and this is what people want. During a great pandemic, and with the stimulus prop up, that's what it was, the stimulus prop up, people for the first time in their lives since they were a child. Because when you're a kid, you have time freedom and someone else is supporting you. So you don't have to worry about making money when you're a kid. And many people got to be children again. For the first time in their adult lives, they had money and free time. And that free time became addictive. It's like, I was dating this girl and during the pandemic and she said when she was working at home, she was able to be able to work at home, do her yoga, run her errands and still get her job done. And she's like, I don't ever wanna go back to the office again. So of these 20, 25 million people, many of them have experienced time freedom with income, having income coming in, having money coming in while they sit at home and do whatever they wanna do. Luxuries, once tasted, become necessities. So we have a bunch of people who could work Uber drivers are making 6,600 bucks a month. DoorDash drivers are making $5,000 a month. Instacart, TashRabbit. There are numerous opportunities for people to make money, but they don't want to. And I feel this is the beginning of the socialist sect. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a fourth stimulus check, but for some reason, for some reason, I would not be shocked if there's a fourth stimulus check because right now, the country is de-evolving. And what do I mean by that? Back when I was growing up, it was a, a thing, it was a matter of pride to get a job. You wanna know one of the most coveted jobs you can get when I was a kid? Being a bagger in the grocery store. They would get you a little white shirt, a little tie, 
you would bag up people's groceries, you would take their groceries to the car, often they would get tips. It was a sweet gig. You would be in air conditioning, you would be working, you'd be helping out friends. It was a sweet gig. It no longer exists. I think Publix has baggers now. I think Publix does. Um, I know Kroger does, well Kroger actually does, but being a baggage boy was a coveted job. And you had to wait in line to get it because once people got these jobs, they didn't let them go. It was a matter of pride to work, earn money, and take care of yourself. That's out the window. That's gone. Right now, we have a social media only fans, how can I make money sitting at home while I sleep type of economy. And there is nothing wrong with seeking to create a business opportunity that makes you money. That's a good thing. Where it, it evolves is you have people who want the money, but they don't want the work. And this creates a conundrum for these people. They want to do whatever they want to do. They want to have fun. They want to be out. They want to do their thing. And they want to also continue to have this time freedom. And I am perplexed. I am perplexed. And when I say I am perplexed, I am talking about people have the opportunity to work, but they don't want to work. They don't want to work. And as long as this government prop up continues, they don't have to work. Right now, we have a housing market that was created by the CARES Act. If these homeowners who are being protected, if their houses had come onto the market, housing prices would not be exploding right now. So the CARES Act has created a situation. There are people who don't want to sell their house because they're seeing what's going on. It's like, if I sell my house, where can I get me another house? So that's created a problem for this group of people. And the CARES Act literally created the current housing market where houses in some markets are selling for six figures over asking price because of bidding wars. We're in a very strange economy where people who need to work, people who are behind on their bills are not taking advantage of the opportunities. It's gotten so bad that some states have ended the federal subsidy on unemployment because people are not going to work. I want you to think about that. Right now, there are many states that are like, hey, we're going to cut out this government money and to incentivize you to get a job and go back to work because employers are struggling. And also, it's not about um, the money. It's about the time. That's the big issue. It's about time. You cannot, like, during the pandemic, we had a lot of women run to OnlyFans, right? And they got used to, and some of these women were making crazy money. I mean, crazy money, right? And luxuries once tasted become necessities. People have become addicted to making money at home. Doing OnlyFans, maybe trading stocks, maybe doing stock options. And this whole, this has been a cultural shift in how America works and what America expects. So right now, 
you have people who are in the danger zone who haven't paid their mortgage in a year, haven't paid their car payment in many months. And because the repo man, I did a video about that, saying the repo man had um, taken a chill pill. The repo man, everyone was working with everyone. Uh, with the CARES Act, the mortgage issuers were forced to work with you. With the CARES Act, apartment complexes were forced to work with you. And car, car financing companies are working with you. Uh, credit card companies are working with you. So you can live in a house, live in an apartment, drive a car, and not have to pay for these things in this current strange economic climate. This is not good. Last year, when this whole thing started, and I was like, instead of sitting at home, letting your mind turn to mush, while you're getting this government prop up money, learn a new skill, make yourself more valuable. A lot of people didn't do that. They were, I uh, was reading this article about um, people were having sex, doing drugs and all this other stuff when they were supposed to be working. I talked about this. I said that people were going to clown and clown they did. They clowned hard because one of the things you guys have got to understand, the natural order of the universe is atrophy. If the universe is left to itself, it falls apart. Look at a house that's vacant. Go to a small town and the house has been vacant for 30, 40 years. It is literally caving in on itself because it doesn't have any energy. It doesn't have life force in it. And right now, we have a lot of people who are experiencing personal atrophy. As a person, they're not growing, they're not learning new skills, they're not hustling, they're just chilling, sitting at home, rubbing on Big Booty Betty's booty and chilling. And they're de-evolving. When I was a kid, there was a periodicals. That's a fancy word for magazines. And there was Popular Mechanics and some other magazines that always had these little tasks and things to do. Very curious, it's like build a race car, build a model, do these things. That culture is gone. Everyone is trying to secure the bag. Everyone is trying to make money with the least amount of work possible, which and let's not confuse being efficient with being lazy. If you build a business like my current business, in time, it's gonna become way more efficient because I'm gonna hire people, I'm gonna have protocols. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is get a phone for that. I already have the phone for the business. I just gotta have it turned on and then transfer everything to that phone. That's gonna probably happen today or tomorrow. So let's not confuse efficiency and quote, working smart with being lazy. And right now it is wild that so many people are choosing not to work when work is available. Let me say that again. Many people are making a conscious choice to not work when work is available. They're making a conscious choice to sit at home in an apartment or a house that they're not paying for to continue to drive a car that they're not paying for because they want to have that time freedom. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be transparent with you guys. When it took me 12 years to get back out into starting a business that wasn't on the internet. I remember my second year of YouTube. My first year I made 62,000, which was thrilling because I was making money from my organic. It was thrilling. 
That second year, I made almost 100K. And I'm going to be honest. I wasn't working that hard. I wasn't I wasn't doing the 40 hour week. I was probably putting out three videos a week. And once I developed my process, it took me about I was working 10 hours a week. 10 hours a week. And then that third year when it exploded because the television shows came on, I was working even less and making an incredible amount of money, making an incredible amount of money. So I actually had this idea that I was going to retire and I retired for like three months and I could not deal with it because when you're a productive person, just sitting around, just chilling. And also here's something else that many people who have retired early have, can testify to. You may have retired early, but the rest of your world hasn't. You've got all this free time, but the majority of your friends don't have that free time. You're, the majority of the world operates on the weekend schedule. This is why I hate trying to get shit done on the weekends. Like um, the Porsche. I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to pick up that car this weekend because it is, I mean, in the current environment, you got people who don't want to do their job, who want to be off, who want to go to the beach, who want to take vacation, who want to chill, who want to eat fish dinners, drink tropical drinks. They don't want to work. They don't want to work. So you've got this whole situation where people are choosing not to take advantage of opportunity because they want what they want. Like with me, my car rental business. I got people who should be driving the Camry. They, they will book their, that BMW for 60 bucks a day in a heartbeat. The Camry's 35 bucks a day. The Camry is what they should be in, but they want what they want. And as my friend David Dinkins says, sell what people are buying. So I'm gonna buy more BMWs because even though they should be driving Camrys, now I will get adults, people over 30, you know, like, hey, give me, give me that Camry, give me that low price. I even got a few kids who are in Camrys because they're like, hey, that's the business. I need that low price. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand is this is the marketplace. These people are voting with their feet. I don't care if there is a job available. I really don't care if there's a job available. Don't care at all. Because it's not the kind of job that I want. I want a job that's going to give me instant benefits, a 30 to 35 hour work week. Essentially, I have a three day weekend every week, uh, plenty of time, plenty of flexibility. And oh, yeah, I need to be making 50 to 100K. Even though my personal finance life is deteriorating. My financial orbit is deteriorating. I'm not paying my mortgage. I'm not paying my rent for my apartment. I'm not paying my car note. I'm behind on my credit cards, but I am not going to get a job that I don't want. Even though from a personal finance standpoint, my life is in deep doo-doo, but because of the great prop up and the stimmy, which at some point is gonna run out. Uh, like I said, I don't know if there's going to be another stimulus check this year, but if there is another stimulus check, I would not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised because we have a democratic government, democratic president, democratic Senate, democratic house. I would not be surprised in the next year or so if these people push out a form of universal basic income because the people have voted. I am not going to work. I don't care if McDonald's is paying 15 bucks an hour. I don't want to work at McDonald's. I don't care if I can make a gang of money driving Uber. I don't want to work with Uber. I don't care if I can make $8,000. There's a guy here on YouTube made $8,000 working 30 days a week, 30 days a month, 12 hours a day. He made $8,000 
I think doing Uber Eats or DoorDash. Eight thousand dollars. He went hard in the paint. So if you're a person who needs money, if you are a person who wants to work, if you're a person who's in desperate need of money, the money's available. The money is there. The money is on the table. But it's not doing something that you want to do. Uh, it's not something that you feel is worthy of your time. And people are stark, raving narcissists. Let's go back in time. When I was suffering, um, none of this stuff existed. There was no Uber, Uber Eats, DoorDash, YouTube, Instagram. There was none of this stuff. None of this stuff. None of it existed, right? And I would have been crazy impressed if I could have sat at home and just made $50,000 a year back at that point in time. I would have been like happy as hell. Because back then, 50, 50K a year, that was good money. That was really good money. And um, it didn't exist. And what's, what I'm saying is from a social standpoint, we have changed as a country. It used to be that when people had financial needs and there was jobs available, people would scoop up the jobs. They're like, hey, I... Hi, my name is Ed Jones. I hear you folks got a job. Yes, we do, Ed. This is the job. It pays this. I'm down. When do I start? That was America 30 years ago. If there were jobs available and people needed money, they would go to work. They would go to work. But today, America's very, very different. America is completely different. America is operating on a social media narrative. You're seeing all of these people, van life. Um, once again, it's about experiences. Millennials are pretty much driving Airbnb. Glamping, where you go out to someone's property and stay in a tent and you take a shower in an outdoor shower, people are paying for these experiences. You want to know why? I have a theory. Life in America is so cushy that you can coast and be okay. Right now, you can coast. You do not have to amp up to a higher level to, to make it in America now. You can be a regular person doing regular people stuff and you can make it in America. And here's something that's funny. If you are at the poverty level in America, you're still richer than 85% of the world. Let me say that again. If you're at a poverty level in America, you live in a house with air conditioning, cable, Netflix, all this other stuff. You drive a car, may not be a luxury car, but it's a car. Do you understand that the majority of the world doesn't have a car? Do you understand the majority of the world doesn't have air conditioning? The majority of the world doesn't have air conditioning. There are people in Africa right now out there I don't even know what time it is in Africa. Let's see what time is it in Africa. Um, hold on a second. What time is it in Africa? Time in Africa.
time in Africa is 4.13 p.m. in Africa right now. There is someone in Africa, in Egypt, who is sweating their booty off because they don't have air conditioning. They don't have a car. They don't have cable. They don't have Netflix. But right now in America, it is set up where you can actually coast and be taken care of. It is set up where you don't have to perform at a high level. It is set up where you can just exist, have lunch with your friends, just hang out, just chill. Even though you're not paying your mortgage, you're not paying your rent, you're not paying your car payment, you're not paying your credit cards, and everyone is working with everyone. And here's something that I predict is gonna happen. At some point, all this is gonna go away. The great government prop up. I do feel, because there's so many people who are behind on their mortgages, that the government is going to create a law forcing these mortgage companies to put these extra payments at the end of the mortgage. Essentially, the government's gonna create a program forcing these mortgage lenders to modify these mortgages because we're moving to year two of this. And let's say your mortgage is just $1,000 a month and you haven't paid your, your mortgage in 24 months. That's $24,000. Most of America cannot come up with $24,000. So as the problem continues to grow, I fully expect some type of government legislation to continue to protect these people. And this is what I'm talking about. You could have went out, got yourself a house, not pay for it, and the government and the current economic state that we live in is going to protect you. Uh, it's crazy. But at some point, let's go four years in the future. I'm, I'm estimating four years in the future, all of this stuff will be solved. Uh, I was reading an article, and for those of you who don't want to get vaccinated, the places with the highest vaccination rate, COVID is all but disappeared. The places, the red states, the Republicans, COVID is surging. It is surging. Just put that out there because a lot of people getting real political and vaccinations and stuff, but you're in the area where a lot of people are not getting vaccinated. Your chances of catching COVID have increased have increased and you know you know say what you will i got vaccinated because i knew that i'd be starting this business and i would be coming in contact with all kinds of people um essentially with my internet lifestyle i didn't really i have come in more contact with more strangers and more people in the last two months than i have in probably the last three or four years so that's one of the reasons I got vaccinated because I knew that I would be out here um, shopping for cars, meeting new people, doing all this other stuff. So my exposure rate to the public has a hundred times, hundred X, hundred X. So that's one of the reasons I got vaccinated and I'm glad I did because once again, I don't want to catch this, you know, super bug or whatever you want to call it. And once again, there are people who are still getting COVID. Oh, she's walking. I was wondering what she was doing. There are people who are still getting COVID. There are people who are having issues and it is going to continue on. So one of the things you guys need to understand is if you're a hustler, or a business owner, this is great opportunity. You wanna know why it's great opportunity? So many people are, have opted out of the game. They don't even wanna get a job, let alone start a business. So there's way less competition in virtually every sector. Now, OnlyFans, I don't know how the OnlyFans thing was working, uh, but 
it, it, it's crazy. It is just crazy. Um, right now is the best time, in my opinion, to start a business. Because everyone's working with everyone. Essentially, let's say you start a business and you fail. Not a big problem in today's environment. Because everyone's working with everyone. It's, it's hard. We got COVID. We got the pandemic. So this is the best time for you to throw your hat into the ring or pull out your dance cart and start a business because less people than ever are actually trying to start businesses. Less people than ever. And this is going to create so much opportunity, uh, create so many opportunities for true hustlers. Because we have the socialist sect. We have the people who are going to sit at home, collect these government checks, not pay their mortgage, not pay their car note, not pay their rent. Um, right now, you, you're going to have, like, there, there's a segment of society that is all part of the get over culture. And there's a segment of society that's going to ride this puppy until the puppy stops running. Uh, there are people right now who are working. But because of the government prop up, they're not paying their mortgage. They're not paying their rent. And these people are being protected. They're getting, the, they're getting away with murder right now. Also, there's another thing that's going on. The crime rate is going through the roof. People are committing crimes at unprecedented levels. I'm talking about credit card fraud, car thefts, real carjackings, not the fake carjacking story that I was told, but real carjackings. So expect the economy to be funky, crazy, wild, strange for another. But for me, it is strange that there's opportunity to make money and people are assiduously not taking advantage of these money-making opportunities because they want the perfect job. Just like this chick who didn't want the Camry but flattened my tires on the BMW. She didn't want to drive what she should have been driving. And a lot of these Americans don't want to do the jobs that they're able and fit to do because they feel that they want a better job. And during the great government prop up, they can get away with it. They can get away with it. They can go ahead and not work and have obligations because of the great stimuli, the stimulated economy, the great prop up and get away with it. And what I feel is these people who are being picky, um, I feel that their economic futures are going to be very, very bad. Very, very bad. Do you understand that each year that you come out of the employment force and you're just out here making less money, that impacts your income for a decade or more? So a lot of the people who are choosing not to work, who are choosing to step out of the economy who are choosing to not scoop up uber or doordash and i've seen it in the comments jobs man they don't pay nothing man they got you working like a hebrew slave and i'm gonna say to you you guys don't know what it is to work like a hebrew slave you don't know what it is to work a hard job a hard manual labor job that when you come home and you sit down you are so exhausted because you are literally worn out. A lot of you have never worked that hard. And a lot of these new jobs are so easy. I remember Sinbad was talking about working at McDonald's where essentially you just tapped an icon on the kiosk and it had a picture. Oh, hamburger, bam, Whopper, bam, drinks, bam. Not numbers, just a picture. So it's like, oh, you want bro, pictures. So you guys, even in fast food, you're not working as hard as they used to work in fast food. I remember in the high school, 
and this was another COVID job, if you can get it. A girl that I, I really took a liking to, she got a job at Jack's. I don't know if that restaurant still exists because it it was like a hamburger joint. They serve hot dogs and she got this job at Jack's. And I remember going to Jack's and she was at the counter and she's like, hi, this is Madison. Welcome to Jack's. How can I serve you? And that, that girl was gorgeous. She was just gorgeous. And she had that little job and she took that money and bought her a car. And it, it was just such a different world because notice, think about this. When is the last time you've seen an extremely pretty chick work a dirty job? You rarely see that. When I was coming up, it was the norm. I don't care how good looking a girl was. She would work any kind of job. Madison was, on a scale of 1 to 10, Madison was a 15. I mean, beautiful smile, long curly hair, some perky breast, and a fat booty. Mm, that girl was beautiful. And she was working a job that many women who look like her today will not even consider. It's like, I, I'm too pretty. I remember years and years ago, I was at McDonald's and this girl, she was really pretty. She was working at McDonald's and this player, player type like, baby girl, you too pretty to be working here. And I, I, I kind of like, no, she ain't. She ain't too, she ain't too pretty to work. You need to stop doing this. I, I lost it on him. And he looked at me like, Man, I'm trying to get my Mac on. I'm like, elevate your Mac. She she ain't too pretty to be working here. She ain't too pretty. And essentially, I want you to think, when is the last time you've seen a very pretty girl working a low-wage job? You don't see it. Now, you will see them in higher-end restaurants where servers can make $1,500, $2,000 a week. You will see them there. But you will not see them at McDonald's. You will not see them at Popeyes. You will not see them at these. You, you just won't see them. You will not see them. Because I know this a restaurant that's called um, Buttermilk. It's a farm to table restaurant. And when I first started going there 10 years ago, the staff was hot. I mean, there was this one chick. She, she had a booty and she had that crazy walk. I mean, when she walked, she was pow, pow, throwing it. That was just her natural walk. She just slanging it. Go there now, they're not so attractive anymore. Everyone there is like a five and below. And this is one of the cultural shifts that we're encountering today. That people who could work these jobs are not working them. They're not. So... It's going to be interesting. Next five years is going to be interesting. I'm going to be building businesses because, um, like me, I, a lot of people were like, man, why are you doing that? That's a lot of hassles. You know, there's some easier. I choose to go where the money is. I do believe in two years, this business is going to be crazy profitable and it's still going to have issues. I'm still going to have repairs. I'm going to still have renters messing up stuff. It's just, that's the business. It comes with the job, man. It comes with the job. So I got some new training coming up in July. The corporate papers. Give me some time to really hammer that down and talk about that. And also, I got some credit training that's coming up because um, Bam Man Kevo. I mean, maybe I need to get me some jewelry and, and do this and flash and point to my watch and stuff because many people. He's convinced people. Because I've listened to his advice from a educated perspective, and I know it's garbage. It's absolutely garbage. And one of the things that I'm getting ready to do is do some real credit training and some real credit repair and some real credit guidance. Because uh, I, certain things I have known for years, I don't even see anyone on YouTube even talking about this stuff. So look for that. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.